Hey everybody, Mark here. Going to do a quick video about the XYZ Wear by DaVinci. Uh, this is their uh, user interface software that you can bring in your STL models and uh, slice them and orientate them uh, to allow it to print on the DaVinci 1.0, 2.0, or 1.1 models that are available currently. So let's go through the software. Um, we'll start in the upper left hand corner with some of the buttons that you can use. There is a minus and a plus button and as they uh, indicate when you do your minus it zooms away when you do your plus it zooms in. Um, there is a view button you can click view um, that will give you different views so you have your top your bottom your front back left and right. Um, this is really nice if you have to move a model around in space. I typically look at the top view when I'm moving stuff around um, to make sure there's no clashing occurring um, in the models. Uh, so you can also press your reset button and your reset button will bring you back into the standard default orthogonal mode. Um, so those are really nice buttons. Uh, also you can click uh, less left mouse click and also move your boxes around or move your working surface around um, and then just like every other modeling you can use your center uh, scroll wheel to zoom in and out um, so these are nice features especially like I said to go to the top view um, so you can view the top but let's bring a model in and show you how the software works so I go into my import I choose my owl um, a lot of people have seen this out it's a pretty classic model um, so uh, the owl will always, uh, from, uh, always default backwards in. Um, like I said, sometimes you want to present uh, the owl while you're printing to the front of the window screen. Uh, but the newer software um, uh, allows, us, allows a feature into it that actually shows the triangles um, and how many triangles, the density of the triangle spacing um, inside of it. I do like it, but the only thing I do not like is when you zoom out. Uh, it kind of looks like a see-through model. Um, not a big deal, uh, but let's do something first. Uh, let's go through the buttons to show you how you can use the buttons. So there's a move button. Uh, the move button will always default the object in your uh, in your in your 100 100 zero, or that's the the dead center uh, of the platen. Uh, but what you can do, you can slide models around just with this toggle you cannot click on it and move it so this is not you know interactive here the only thing you can do is move around uh, your views so you have to use a button to the left um, so you can move around uh, this is nice you also can uh, use your up and down keys so if you just want to click it uh, it will move a millimeter each step as well as the Y if you want to move Y forwards or backwards um, and then your Z so you can move your Z up or down. Uh, don't really know why you need to move your Z up uh, at all um, because obviously you cannot print in space. Uh, maybe this will become more in handy when you have the 2.0 and you had two different color objects you wanted to print one consecutively on the next. Um, but the nice thing is you have these two buttons here as well. There's a land button. Uh, this will put the bottom of your uh, STL file against the platen so you can print as well as those are reset button that will bring it back to the standard default. Um, so that's the first part. Uh, let's go into the rotate command. Um, rotate command is very similar to move. It's designed so you can rotate the model around. All I did here was I just left clicked and I can rotate it. Uh, but it's hard to get it exactly to where you need it so sometimes your mouse will jump over if you want to get to exactly 180. Um, but uh, they added the feature in. You can just click here uh, and then use your up and down keys uh, to rotate exactly where you want to look. Uh, so, like I said, this uh, bounding, this red uh, bounding box around the front, the front of the door. So, if you're printing this, if you're going to a school and showing how the machine works, it's always nice to have um, the object looking out. Um, instead of looking to the back of the machine. Um, so that's the rotate command. You also can press your reset on your rotate command. Um, if you did mess up, if you had it 
if you had the object kind of floating in space and you didn't didn't like the orientation just press reset uh, but let's move him back around I'm just holding down the up button it doesn't uh, re-update the model if you keep your finger down on it so if you do have a heavy uh, heavy STL model um, that maybe you don't have the best graphics card uh, you can hold down the button uh, while you move it so that's the rotate command um, uh, so if we click back on it uh, let's go into the scale command the scale command added the millimeters to inches and inches to millimeters um, so if you just click the button it will scale it millimeters will make it really huge but let's go back uh, so let's say this was set uh, in the wrong setting so this should make it really small um, so you always can scale it up or down um, again you can come in here and press your up or down key to grow the object or shrink the object um, or you can just use the toggle to adjust the sizes uh, also I think you can in this box yes you can um, you can just type in the size you wanted so if we said 80 inches or 80 percent of what the original was there we go um, also if you click if you didn't notice when you click on the object the scale information does arrive on it but if you click off of it uh, the bounding box leaves the STL model um, and also your buttons the left hand side have disappeared so if you can't find the buttons always click back on the object um, then you can start working on it again uh, there's an info button uh, this is nice uh, if you had to know maybe the volume just you know quick references uh, the sizes of it um, and stuff like that so if you needed uh, this to fit inside something uh, here's your your XYZ dimension so you can do your scaling factor uh, to maybe fit inside a box for a gift or whatnot um, but you also have a remove button so you can just press the remove button and it'll delete it out uh, so there's one owl in um, you cannot copy an owl you know control C the only way to get that same owl back in there uh, is to save it out uh, save the STL out so for example if this is the size owl I want so I would do owl um, let's say owl small or owl 80 for 80 percent and I will save that out so now my my owl at 80 percent saved out um, so then I can just come and import the owl in again at 80 percent open up uh, but you'll see something it will put it in the default uh, right in the center uh, and there's no easy way besides just going in here and moving your owl into the right plane uh, to make it work so there we have two owls ready to be printed in the same print bed um, maybe we should go over some of these buttons so as you saw I've been using the import button to bring SDLs in there's an export button and the export button is used to save out the uh, proprietary uh, software by DaVinci uh, to save out the slice um, so it's not really exporting anything it's just exporting uh, their software so if you uh, sometimes it takes longer uh, to process the file uh, have seen it go up to 30 minutes to process or to slice a file um, so if you uh, if you weren't right there uh, after it says print uh, you can do you can do the export and then go to, into the print button later um, but let's cancel out of there uh, the export button is very similar to the print so we'll go into the print and show you how this works so I'm ready to print I press the print print button and then there are some settings I I currently have the DaVinci 1.0 but it does the 2 and the 1.1 plus so you can change your default settings uh, you're there are three different qualities that you can print out these are just default settings that XYZ is created there is a normal a good or an excellent the only thing that really changes is this layer height and the uh, 3d density I found that these 3d densities are pretty low for example these low ones I have never printed at 15% or less. I've always done medium um, to solid, depending on what I needed to print. 
Uh, but if you don't like their default settings, you can ease, you can go into it and choose, for example, let's say 25%. Uh, my shell thicknesses makes one, two, or three passes. I can click my th thick shell path, and then my layer default from 0.1 millimeters to 0.4 millimeters. Um, I typically print the 0.2 to 0 0.3. 0 0.1 does not look that good. 0 0.2 looks much better than 0 0.1. Um, 0 0.1, there is usually... Uh, you can see the layers just as well as 0.2 um, but so there's that I always have my auto repair turned on uh, this because the XYZ software uses the slicer engine um, it uses the same proprietary information that slicer uses uh, to fix their STL files if there are any issues this is a new feature um, that has been reduced and I think the last couple couple additions but that has helped out a lot uh, up here you have your raft, your support, and your auto repair. Um, I've turned raft on before. It doesn't really create the best of a raft. Uh, you have to cut it away, but if you need to put a raft down, if you have a very large print, obviously go, go and do it. Uh, there's a support button that you can choose. Uh, with support turned on, you can choose what density support. There is a low, medium, and high. Um, the fault's always high, and it's really, really hard to pull stuff off. I typically stay in the medium to low range, depending on what I need to print. Um, so there's your support. And then you can do create these profiles. Um, so you can come over here. So if this is one of the profiles I want to do, I just press Create. Or, or, so if I choose this profile to be saved out, I will choose my default settings, go to Profiles, press Create. And I'll create a little pop-up screen. Um, so I'll do uh, 0.2 millimeters, and what we're we at 25%. Um, it doesn't let you type in too much. So to give you an idea, that is as far as I can type. Um, so not really a lot of information, but you can press yes. It'll save it out for you. Um, and there we go. So we have this 0.2 default. Your default settings will go right here. Uh, so if you do have a default setting, I feel it's just as easy just to click these buttons um, than to go over to profiles and choose the profile. Um, so I don't really use that feature a lot, but when you're ready to go, you just press your print button and it'll start to process the file, taking anywhere from a couple seconds uh, to 30 minutes. But let's go through some of the other buttons while we're here. There's a settings button. Uh, settings just just languages your printer type, uh, your fault unit, so if your millimeters or inches. Um, and this is a button I always have turned on. It says import objects with auto positioning. If you do not have that turned on, uh, if you were modeling out in space uh, far away from your origin, uh, you can have problems about when the f how the file comes back in. Now, if it is way out in space, uh, you will understand the issue um, and be able to do your reset it should bring it back to the center but it's not always guaranteed um, and then there's an about button so the about button tells you your version um, updating software uh, in the printer version and let's see what else we have oh we have this button down here uh, that's your print mode and it takes a sec but it talks to your 3d printer if it's connected and it'll give you some information like your your extruder temperature um, and your bed temperature. Uh, what else should we go over? Oh, some advanced features. Let's say we went to the scale feature and we were making it really big. It will not let you make the part when you when you slide it bigger than the build area. So if you want to make the biggest part possible, you just slide it all the way to the right hand side uh, and it'll make the biggest part. But let's say we went to 133. Or let's do 150. So it's outside the build area. Uh, it will not print an object like this because it's red. Um, so you always will have to come back in here and you can either reset it to scale it back down. Um, but just like the scale button, the sliders will not put you outside the boundaries no matter which direction you slide it. Um, so you can get, you can put this object in the back corner. If you want to 
and that is the farthest back this object can be so you can 